Good afternoon and welcome back to Kinsman Stadium in Oshawa for the gold medal matchup of the 2021 OCW Men's Baseball Championship here as we get ready for the showdown between the St. Clair Saints and the Humber Hawks. The teams that were the top two in the OCW all season long will meet here for the gold medal this afternoon. As it is a double knockout tournament, St. Clair has not lost a game yet, but Humber has lost a game. They lost last night to the St. Clair Saints 7-5. Humber will need to win this game and then force another game following this one. So if the Humber Hawks can win this game, there would be a second game following this one this afternoon. St. Clair essentially having a mulligan, if you will, if they're not able to win this game, they would get a second chance. Brian Oliver along with Jacob Ebbs, and we are getting set to see the St. Clair Saints in white. They are taking the field as the home team in this game with the higher record in the regular season. These teams played quite a game last night in the very cold temperatures here at the stadium. 7-5 win for St. Clair. They had a big lead in that game. Almost saw it slip away, but held on, and that, that gives them the upper hand here this afternoon and a chance to win the first gold medal for the program in four years. Yeah, you know, this is uh, this is what we've came here to see. This is a proper gold medal game. You got the best versus the best kind of going at it here. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, fantastic game last night. I think if we saw a nine-inning game, I think we actually would have seen a chance of Humber coming back, and then who knows what would have happened from there. You know, they uh, started trickling away in the fifth and sixth. Three runs, two runs, made it back to 7-5. Unfortunately, not able to bring them back the whole way. But, uh, hey, this is a rematch. Let's see what happens. The Humber Hawks advanced to this game with a big win this morning in a game against the Seneca Sting, a game that Humber trailed midway through the game, but uh, this, the Humber Hawks broke out with four runs in the sixth inning and won it 6-2 to two to advance to the gold medal. Seneca settling for the bronze medal, the first medal in the program's history. So Seneca gets the bronze, the gold and the silver here to be decided between the two teams that... The, the only two teams in OCW history that have won the gold medal. St. Clair winning four, five straight championships from 2013 to 2017. And, and Humber has won the last two championships in 2018 and 2019. We are ready to go. Michael Hamlin is the pitcher for St. Clair. And the first pitch of the game has popped up to foul territory on the left side. And Inuk Watts, the third baseman, will catch that pop-up from... Steven now, Rebecca, one away on one pitch. Hey, you know what? Uh, maybe not the best uh, first pitch to swing at, but uh, you know what? Hey, one pitch, one out. They'll take it. Dennis DeBanning will be the batter now for the Humber Hawks with one away here, top of the first inning. Humber in the blue jerseys. They are the visiting team. St. Clair in the white jerseys is the home team. It's ball one to Dennis DeBanning. Michael Hamlin is the pitcher, number six. We'll set the defense for St. Clair in just a moment for you. Here's the 1-0. It's low, ball two. Henry Real is the catcher. Colin Robinson is at first. Carter Ray at second. Josh Anderson is the shortstop. Inic Watts at third. 2-0 to DeBanning, and he'll take that for a strike, two and one. In the outfield, Patrick Kibble is in left. Spencer Morin in center and Hunter Appleyard in right. Riley Briggs is the DH for St. Clair in this ball game. Here's the 2-1, fouled away, 2-2. Two two. Michael Hamlin making his first start of the tournament. Has a two and two count here to Dennis DeBanning, the OCAA's Player of the Year. And that ball takes something off of it, Jake, and it uh, doesn't make it to the plate, so it's 3-2. and two. Yeah, it looked like uh, in a very common situation when you got the off-speed or even the change-up, you're going to try and baby it, make it look a little bit slower than it actually is. Instead of just throwing through it, trusting your grip, and just letting the ball do the work. So it's a full count here. DeBanning looking to get on. He swings and misses. Strike three as... Hamlin gets his first strike out of the ball game. Two up, two down here for Humber in the first. Hamlin working incredibly fast. He's getting the ball again on the bump and throwing it. I love it. Right, 
It'll be Justin Respanti now, the third baseman for Humber. Coming up here with two out, nobody on. Hamlin this year made three appearances, only pitched eight innings during the regular season. Earned run average of 1.75 as he gets Respanti to swing at the first pitch, 0-1. Hamlin is a third year player for the St. Clair program. Struck out six and walked only one. Gave up two earned runs in those three appearances this year. Next pitch is off the catcher's mitt. Goes wide, ball one, one and one. Game time temperature, nine degrees. The 1-1 one, one pitch is in there for strike two. Russ Patty taking all the way. The 1-2 is fouled away. Russ Patty just chopping that one away to the left side. One and two will remain the count. Yeah, that was an emergency hack there. <laughs> but at this level, that's what the, the good hitters do. Mm -hmm. Two strikes, they find a way to stay alive and wait for the pitch that they want. Let's see if Respanti gets it here. Hamlin works and off speed just misses, two and two. Great pitch there, great one two pitch, just outside, just a hair. Two balls and two strikes to Justin Respanti. Hamlin is ready, here it is. In another emergency hack, as you say, and almost getting a chance to catch it in foul territory there is Enoch Watts, and uh, it lands harmlessly for a foul ball, so we'll do it all again. So Respanti has fouled off two pitches with two strikes. Stay alive. Trying to get on base to be the first base runner of the game for Humber. This is the gold medal matchup, the Humber Hawks and the St. Clair Saints. Here's the 2-2. Taken for strike three all the way. Hamlin walks off. Three up, three down, strikes out two. We've played half an inning. It is Humber North, no score, and the St. Clair Saints coming to bat. So just the start, Jake, that to the St. Clair Saints would be looking for here as they try and secure a gold medal here in the OCAA Championships. Three up, three down. They also know that they are facing a, hum <coughs> pardon me, a Humber Hawks team that is depleted a little bit from a pitching standpoint. They've had to use a lot of hurlers all weekend long. Yeah. We're going to see Dalton Brownlee appear again. He pitched yesterday in Humber's uh, game against the Seneca Sting, and we, we think he threw between 55 and 60 pitches. So on one, uh, he, he hasn't had a lot of rest, didn't really empty the tank yesterday. We'll see how far he can go. Yeah, great point, Brian. All weekend long, uh Humber has been forced to go to their bullpen multiple times. The starters have not been very reliable in the grand scheme of things. Dalton Brownlee uh, pitched yesterday. Again, like you said, he started the game 60 pitches, give or take. I think in a very high situation like this, uh, you know, which is a you know adrenaline roll and everything like that, and probably a few Advil in the system for Dalton Brownlee, uh, I think he'll just be treating like this, like a regular start with regular rest. In that game yesterday that Brownlee pitched, he left the game after the Humber Hawks scored 12 runs in the fourth inning. And uh, when the game, when he left the game, or when he was still pitching, it was still a close 6-2 ball game. But then all of a sudden Humber ignited for 12 runs against Seneca. And the uh, Hawks took him out of the ball game at that point. And in retrospect, that's probably a wise decision because it allows them to use Brownlee again in this crucial gold medal match with the St. Clair Saints. Yeah, hum totally right. Sorry, Brian, Sorry. but totally right. It was uh, truly the right decision. And it, really, when you're kind of looking back at it, when uh, pardon me, when Humber scored that 12-run uh, uh, inning uh, yesterday, really, the only that's the only decision you can make there. Leaving him out there just really risks him being, you know, not ready to go for game day. As simple as that. The Hawks did get a great performance today in the early morning game against Seneca with Braden Taylor holding the fort and pushing Humber to a 6-2 win to earn the right to play in this game. Carter Ray will start things off here for St. Clair. Again, they are in the white jerseys. They are the home team. No score, bottom of the first inning. Carter Ray is the second baseman for the Saints. 
Bats from the right side. Brownlee is ready. And he will look at ball one. Humber's defense looks like this. Tyrus Bath is the catcher. Aiden Murphy at first base. Hudson Lockwood at second. David Boato at short. Justin Raspanti at third. Here's the 1-0. That's in there for a strike, one and one. Humber's outfield, Dennis DeBanning is in left field. Steven now Rebecca in center. And Robert Champion is the right fielder. The DH is Jacob Turner. The 1-1, one -one, fouled away by Ray, one and two. Saints will be trying to jump on Humber early here if they can and really try and go for the jugular if they can. They know that they've got Humber on the ropes. They beat them 7-5 last night. Built up a 6-0 lead in that game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, they're really just trying to go for the ju jugular here and just knock them out first game. Save them uh, any nerves here or any possibility. Just knock them out now. That last pitch to Carter Ray was high for ball two. Two balls and two strikes to the leadoff hitter here for St. Clair in the bottom of the first. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Brownlee gets a big strikeout to lead the game off. One away. It'll be Josh Anderson now, the shortstop for St. Clair. Jersey number 17. Bats from the right side. One of four all-stars on this team in the OCAA for the St. Clair Saints. Humber also had four of them. As Anderson looks at strike one. Here's the Owen pitch from Dalton Brownlee. Anderson will take it just low for ball one. One ball, one strike. Looked pretty close. That was a pretty good pitch there, yeah. Not much wrong with that. The 1-1 one, one to Anderson. He will take that one high for a ball. Two balls and a strike. Anderson is the shortstop. It's a sort of loosey-goosey approach at the plate. He's, he's plays with a lot of energy. Yeah, certainly. 2-1 pitch is low. Three and one. Josh Anderson, disciplined at the plate, hit three walks in that game last night against the Humber Hawks. And now has a 3 1 count here against Dalton Brownlee. And he'll foul the 3 1 offering away, three and two. On deck is Colin Robinson, the first baseman. Humber trying to keep Anderson off the base pass here. Time is called at the plate. Humber Hawks looking to three-peat as OCAA champions. They will need to win this game to stay alive. If St. Clair wins this game, they are the gold medal champions. Here's Brownlee's 3-2 offering. It's low, ball four. And Anderson has another walk. He goes down to first base and he has speed. Definitely a threat to steal. Yeah, definitely. And you got a power hitter here for St. Clair in Colin Robinson, one of the all-stars on this Saints team. First baseman, bats from the right side. Opportunity knocking here early for St. Clair. Bottom of the first inning, no score. First pitch taken for a ball. Dalton Brownlee got Carter Ray on a strikeout to lead off the game, but then walked. The runner goes. Ball is hit high in the sky to center field. Steven now Rebecca is under it, and he's got it for the second out of the inning. I think Robinson just missed his pitch there. He, he, he got good contact, but then it just, it just went way up in the air. If he had been able to square that up. Yeah, and again, Robinson is their home run leader. That guy is, uh, you know, he is, uh, can absolutely launch a baseball. Launched it high, didn't really launch it deep. So two away now. Runner at first for St. Clair is 
Josh Anderson and the batter will be the catcher, Henry Real. Batted 475 this year. Just behind Stephen Nowrebecki for the number one spot in the OCAA batting race. Swings and misses, strike one. 475 is slugging percentage of 800. 19 runs batted in. Scored 20 runs. Led St. Clair in all kinds of categories. They will check Anderson back to first, Brownlee does. And he is back in safely. Count is 0-1 to the catcher, Henry Real. No score here, bottom of the first inning, gold medal matchup. Humber and St. Clair. The Humber pitcher is ready. Brownlee looks up, looks down, looks up, looks down. Now he throws. Ball is crushed to left field. That is in there for a base hit. Goes to the... Goes to the warning track and doing a good job is Dennis DeBanning to whip it back into the infield quickly. And Anderson has to hold up at third. So it's a two out single for Henry Real and it's runners at the corners now for St. Clair. Yeah, I think uh, DeBanning might have uh, saved Humber a run there. He was on that right away down into the corner. Able to cut it off on the bounce and just throw it in as fast as he can. I definitely think he saved a run there. The batter will be Inic Watts, third baseman. Had some monumental at bats in the game last night against the Humber Hawks. One of them lasted 11 pitches. He comes up here with runner that's the corners, two away. Hits that ball high to center field, or to left field rather, Dennis DeBanning in left center will catch it. Now Rebecca was coming over to help him, but DeBanning catches it and hauls it in for the out. The inning is over, so a threat from St. Clair in the first inning. They leave two runners on and we've played one. No score between the Humber Hawks and the St. Clair Saints. So for St. Clair in that inning, no runs on one hit and a walk. There were two runners left. Dalton Brownlee got a strikeout and then a couple of fly balls to end the threat. Henry Real hit a ball really hard to left field there, but as you mentioned, Jake, defense in a, in a marginal game like this where there's not a lot between the two teams. Both teams are so fundamentally good. Yeah. And uh, the defense there to, to stop the very, very fast Josh Anderson on first base. He could see it all the way, but he ended up holding up at third and, and was una unable to score because of good defense. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Josh Anderson is just a bullet out there on the base paths. He, uh, he, We've seen it all weekend long. He's taken advantage of defensive miscues and have uh, moved up on bases all time. So it's, uh, I'm excited for this. This is gonna be a great game. First inning goes by very, very quickly. And Humber will send up the four, five, six hitters. They were retired, the, uh, the Hawks were retired in order in the first inning. And Michael Hamlin will face Aiden Murphy, Jacob Turner, and David Boato here for Humber. During the regular season, these two teams split, split their two games. And they met last night in the battle of the undefeated teams at the time in the tournament. St. Clair winning that game 7-5, forcing Humber to play this morning in an elimination game against Seneca, which they won 6-2. St. Clair was able to rest this morning and, and prepare for this game. First pitch to Aiden Murphy is in there for a strike 0-1. Oh, really cool, Hamlin is ready and it is fouled away. It looks like it went off maybe the hand of the batter, but uh, Murphy is is going to uh, shake that off. It looks like he's, he's favoring his hand. The umpire called that a foul ball, and from our standpoint, it's hard to tell whether it hit the batter or hit the hand. I don't know. I, I couldn't really. You can't see anything, but uh, by the way that sounded, I didn't hear a bat. I heard flesh. <laughs> yeah, I, it it sounded like it hit his hand as opposed to the bat. But uh, Murphy is uh, 
looking at the umpire and have a little talk with him. But uh, I think he's he's saying that it hit him. But uh, the umpire s says foul ball. So it's 0-2 to Aiden Murphy. Looks like he's all right. And the veteran first baseman is ready to go. The 0-2 from Hamlin is a bit of a delay on the kick there and throws it just off the plate, ball one. Changed the timing of his delivery there a little bit, Jake. Yeah, I love to see it. It's the first time I've seen uh, anyone do that in a long time. Now he has Aiden Murphy out in front of that pitch. And it's a strikeout, third of the game already for Hamlin, one out. Really thrown off that timing, really screws with the batter. Because it's all about, you know, getting the rhythm, getting the timing down. And if you have that, you're, uh, you're going to be rocking pitches. You don't see Murphy take a swing like that too often. No. Great job by Hamlin there. One away. First pitch to Jacob Turner, the designated hitter, is a ball. Humberhawks still looking for their first base runner of the game. They, there is no score in the game. And there is a base runner because Turner fires that into left field over Josh Anderson's head at short, and it's the first base runner of the game. Well, you said they delivered, eh? Yeah, just, just as soon as I say it, it just it always happens. I don't know whether it's a jinx, whether it is, it's just... You say something hasn't, that hasn't happened, and it, that's never happened, and all of a sudden, yeah. it'll happen. It's like magic. It's true, someone hasn't delivered me a million dollars yet either. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> One away here for Humber, top of the second, no score. The batter is David Boato, and he looks at strike one. The base runner is Jacob Turner. Just singled with the first hit of the ball game for the Humber Hawks. Keep an eye on him there at first base. He looks in, does not go. The ball is fouled off the left foot of Boato. And he grimaces and tries to walk that off, as you can see. That one stings. Now, it isn't as cold right now, as it certainly as it was last night for the game between these two teams. But uh, still, still pretty cold. Yeah, freezing. <laughs> last time I checked, it was around 7 degrees. Might have changed a little bit, at least with the wind chill. But... Uh yeah, no, last night was it was bitter cold. We think it was it was maybe two or three degrees during the game last night, if if that. And uh, it's uh, it was cold. It was really cold for that game. The 0-2 pitch is going to be in there for a base hit to center field. Two consecutive singles here as Boato lifts it over second base as Men Carter Ray into center field. And all of a sudden, the Hawks have a threat here in the top of the second inning with two on, one away. That'll bring up the catcher, Tyrus Bath. Number 17, had a huge hit in that last game against the Seneca Sting. It was a two-run double to put his team out in front. He looks at ball one. Bath looking here to get his team on the board and give Humber an early lead against the Saints. First and second, one away. Bath will swing and miss. Strike one. Looks like Bath took his head off, uh, head off uh, the pitch there. That's probably why he missed it. Michael Hamlin, the right-hander for St. Clair, retired the first four batters of the game, but he's given up two consecutive singles here. The 1-1, one, one. check swing does not go. 2-1, two, 2-1 one. Two one is the count now. And a threat building here for the Humber Hawks here in the top of the second inning. Jacob Turner is at second. David Boato at first. And we have time called. The umpire in the, in the infield called time. Something to do with the baseball. And uh, he hands the, uh, he called he called for a new ball rather than the umpire behind the plate, but. Never seen that happen before. Yeah, it was just, it was an unusual, unusual to see the, the field umpire called to call time there. Anyway, the count is two and one. To Tyrus Bath, two on, one away. 
He takes it. It's oh. outside. Ball three. Three and one. Either Real behind the dish is uh, doing a great job of framing those, or those are not missing. Or if not, just missing barely. Hitters count here. Here's the 3 1. Swing and a miss. Similar to the other swing he took. It's taking the head off just a little bit, and it's now full. 3 and 2. Yeah, in big games like this, and we've said it all weekend long, it's time to be clutch up, but you got to do the small things right. Don't think about killing the baseball and you know, driving it over the wall, because very few people can do that. And there it is, strike three. Bath goes down on strikes. He is the fourth strikeout victim of the Humber Hawks here in the early going, two away. So that's a big out for the Saints. The runners have to hold, still runners at first and second, but now there are two out. And it'll be the right fielder, Robert Champion. See what he can do here for Saint, for uh, for Humber. And he will hit the ball high to right field. And it's carrying and carrying. And it is in the corner and it's a foul ball. Good contact there by Champion. Yeah, it really was. We don't really have such a good uh, angle going down uh, the right-hand side towards the corner. But uh, we know he got a lot of that. We definitely could see Hunter uh, Appleyard, the... First, or the the right fielder for St. Clair going way back into the corner to uh, to chase that down, and fortunately for St. Clair, that's a foul ball. So Champion will get back in. Count is 0-1 against Michael Hamlin. No score, and he'll take that pitch just inside. One and one. Good location pitch there from Hamlin. Doesn't get the call. Looking to induce a ground ball here and certainly doesn't want to give Champion another chance to drive one. The 1-1. One, one. That time it's hit down the right field line and it is snagged as a line drive by Colin Robinson and the inning is over. Boy, if that had gotten past Robinson, that's probably a double yeah. and maybe two runs. But Robinson makes a great defensive play for St. Clair. The inning is over. So no runs for Humber in the second inning. We're still scoreless as we go to the bottom of the second. Humber no score, St. Clair no score. So for Humber in the second inning, no runs on Two hits, two runners left. The Hawks did have runners at first and second with one out. Tyrus Bath struck out, and then just moments ago, Robert Champion lining out to the first baseman. And the Hawks unable to score. So it's uh, a pitcher's duel so far. Michael Hamlin for St. Clair and Dalton Brownlee for Humber. As we mentioned at the, at the top of the show, Brownlee did pitch yesterday through, we think, about 56 pitches in that game against Seneca. It was a big win yesterday for Humber over Seneca, 18-5. And Brownlee did come out of that game after three innings once the uh, once the, the game was, was really lopsided, and they saved his arm for, for today using him here. But uh, Brownlee probably not in a position where he could throw 90 pitches or, or, or get really super high into any kind of pitch count in this game. Uh, you know what? I'm not too sure, really. It's, uh, like I said at the beginning of the like, broadcast, with uh, him, I guess, it depends on how well he took his recovery and how well he's able to rebound. But uh, I know very well, as you know, someone who's pitching a few like really big games, it's, uh, you know, in tournament style. You pitch game one or, you know, and then the next day, if you add on the system a good stretch and a good warm-up along with some adrenaline, and uh, you're feeling fresh. The Saints will send up their six, seven, and eight hitters here in the bottom of the second inning, no score. Gold medal game, gold medal on the line. St. Clair wins this game. They are the 2021 OCAA champions. If Humber wins this game, it would be St. Clair's first loss. Yeah, let's go, 
each team would have one loss, and then we would have to play a deciding game about half an hour after the completion of this one. So if Humber wins, there would be another game. If St. Clair wins, the tournament is over. The batter is Riley Briggs, the designated hitter, and Dalton Brown, Br Brownlee fires a strike. The 0-1. Good leave. Took something off of it, and Briggs did not offer at it. Count is one and one. You can see Briggs kind of, you know, at first winds to go after it. In his case, good for him, he laid off. Cuts at that one, fouls it away, and the count is one and two. In the first inning, St. Clair did get two runners aboard on a walk and a single, but stranded two. No runs on one hit for St. Clair. No runs on two hits so far for Humber. Here's the one, two. High. Two and two. Briggs, the batter, bats from the left side. He is ready. Two and two pitch, swung on and missed for strike three. That's the first out of the inning. And the second strikeout of the game for Dalton Brownlee, one out. Yeah, a good change up there. Just dropped right off the table. Well done. <laughs> Center fielder Spencer Moran comes up now with one out. Jersey number one. He's a left-handed hitter. First Cuts of the game, and he looked to maybe show bunt there. He takes it, 1-0. Brownlee's 1-0 pitch is in there for a strike. 1-1. One and one. Base paths are empty right now for St. Clair. No score. We're in the bottom of the second. Now he squares to bunt, fouls it down the left field side. It's a foul ball. And uh, as we've seen throughout the tournament and as we've seen over the years here at Kinsman Stadium, you, you get a bunt down, the, the ground is not particularly flat there. The ball will, if you get it down in the dirt, good chance of it going foul. And that's exactly what happened there. Yeah, exactly. It has to be perfect. And Brian, you made a good point of it earlier. Uh, I think it was earlier today as well as last night. It has to be on the grass for it to be successful. So it's now one ball and two strikes to Spencer Moran. And he will swing and miss. Big cut. It's third strike out of the game for Dalton Brownlee, two out. Three straight retired now by Dalton Brownlee. And that'll bring up the left fielder, Patrick Kibble. So Brownlee getting a couple strikeouts against left-handed hitters. Here's a right-handed hitter in Kibble, and he takes ball one. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Kibble. It is low, ball two, 2-0. Two the Saints have had just two base runners so far in this game. Josh Anderson walked in the first. Henry Real hit a long single to left field, but the Saints did not score. Bases empty, two away here in the bottom of the second. The count is 2-0. and oh. That ball is on the ground, and the pitcher Brownlee comes up with it. He will fire it over to first in the ground, and great scoop by Aiden Murphy as the, the pitcher had the ball, had all day to throw it, and then... As he released it, he, he, he almost spiked it. And uh, great job by Hayden Murphy to hold that there because that could have easily been a, a, a safe base runner at first. Oh, gosh, man. You know, this is why, you know, Petra's fielding practice is just so common because, you know what, it's it's all – we're so used to, you know, throwing downhill and doing a whole bunch of stuff. And then I'm not sure if – even as a pitcher, I don't, I don't really get it. But when we feel the ball, they'll tell you everyone holds their breath. <laughs> 
But for the Hawks, it's a three up, three down inning. And we played two, no score. And if anything, I would say that the, the, this formula right now is, is good news for the Humber Hawks as uh, you know they, they've played two extra games in this tournament. They, you know the, this is only this is St. Clair's third game. Yesterday they their first game in the tournament they beat the Durham Lords five to four. Last night they beat the Humber Hawks here seven to five. But for Humber this is its their fifth game of the of the of the weekend. So uh, they had to play in a quarterfinal sudden death game against George Brown back on Thursday. And of course they won that game, and then they had to play the extra game this morning against the Seneca Sting in an elimination game there. So Humber has, you know, they've, they've, they've played a lot more baseball already this week and they've played those two extra games. But uh, if the longest this stays scoreless, the better it is for Humber, I would think. Yeah, I would agree with that. Because, you know, I, it, Humber knows we're keeping them in check. Nothing wrong there. And who knows, maybe they can extend it to a second game. So it'll be the number nine hitter. Hudson Lockwood, second baseman for Humber to lead things off here in the top of the third inning. This is his first plate appearance of the game. And he will foul the first pitch off to the to the right side, 0-1. No runs on two hits for the Hawks so far. No runs on one hit for the Saints. Pitchers ruling the day at the moment. Here's Michael Hamlin. Pitches in there for a strike, 0-2. Hammond with four strikeouts in the game. Humber's Dalton Brownlee has three strikeouts. The 0-2 misses. Hamlin working quickly here. Shakes off the first pitch, now he's ready. Here's the 1-2. And that is lifted to right center field. It could be trouble. Carter Ray cannot get to it, the second baseman. And it drops in for Humber's third hit of the ball game. The number nine hitter gets on with a signal, a single, and it turns the lineup over for Steven Nowrabecki. This is exactly what Humber would like to see here. They get a base runner on, and they bring up now Rebecca to Banning and Rispanti here. So a chance for Humber to break out on top here in the top of the third inning. Now Rebecca is 0 for 1 of the game. He popped out the third to lead it off. Runner does not go. Pitch is low. Top of the third inning, no score between Humber and St. Clair. Now Rebecca, the batting champion of the year in the OCAA, he takes a pitch just low, 2-0. Looked like he wanted to take a rip at it. Checked his swing, gets the call, 2-0. And time is called. Lockwood is the base runner at first for the Humber Hawks. He led this inning off with a single to right center. And that pitch is taken oh, for ball yeah. three, three and oh. Two really good pitches there. Now Rebecca now with a three and oh count. Lockwood the runner at first. He did steal one base this year. Does not go, pitches low and in the dirt for ball four. It's a walk. And now the Hawks have runners at first and second, and nobody out. And here comes OCW Player of the Year, Dennis DeBanning. In the first two innings, Michael Hamlin, the Saints pitcher, was able to retire the first batter each time. But in this inning, the first two Hawks have reached. DeBanning is 0 for 1 in the ball game. He struck out in the first. The 
The fifth year veteran, Humberhawk, left fielder is ready to go. Where's jersey number 16, bats from the right side. And he will look at ball one. All of a sudden, Hamlin is in a bit of a jam here. Yeah, Hamlin's control has uh, has inverted here. He was uh, he was firing fastballs, and you know he put it wherever he wants. Now it's uh, he's having trouble finding the strike zone. Count is a, was one and zero. Oh. Hamlin pitch takes something off of that one. DeBanning cuts on it. Strike one. That swing by DeBanning uh, was trying to leave the ballpark. We know he can leave the ballpark too. Five home runs this year. Big time power at the plate. Count is one and one. That time it's hit the center field and it's right at the center fielder and it is caught. Great job in center field as that ball was coming in low again to Spencer Morin and he had to go down and get it and also battling the sun. Great defensive play by the center fielder for the Saints and the runners have to hold one away. That ball was hit really hard, Jake, and uh, again, if it gets past the center fielder, it would go all the way to the wall. Yeah, it, yeah, it really did. It's uh, Dennis has been just, at least today, you know, he's, I think he's found his stride a little bit more uh, in today's uh, important games. So that'll bring up Justin Raspati. And he swings at the first pitch, fouls it, strike one. Humber with runners at first and second. One away now. The Hawks looking to get on the board first against St. Clair. Here's the 0-1. It's not there. It's low for a ball, one and one. Lockwood at second, driver Becky at first. Raspati in the game is 0 for 1. He struck out looking in the first inning. Here's the 1-1 one -one from Hanlon. It's low, 2-1. and one. A single and a walk to start this inning for Humber. DeBanning just flew out to center field for the first out. Raspanti now with a 2-1 count. Hamlin fires. It is hit on the ground. Chopper. And it's a fair ball. And now they're going to try and send the runner home from third. And it's a run. Very strange delay defensively as the St. Saint Clair Saints thought that might have been a foul ball. That hit off home plate. Or hit off home plate. At the moment, it, it was a fair ball. And then the Saints had to field it. Colin Robinson went over to second, stepped on the bag to record the out. Now the umpires are going to consult. You say it hit the plate. I thought it hit the plate there. As the first thing I heard was uh, the material on home play. I could be completely wrong. As it stands, it was uh, originally ruled a fair ball. The umpires are talking about it. There are four umpires in this game for the gold medal game. And uh, if the play stands, it's a run for Humber. They are talking about it. Oh, they're going to overturn it. And here we go. The Humber Hawks are going to argue that's their side of the argument now. So it looks like the runners are going to have to go back. Here's, uh, here's my concern here is that the home plate umpire had the best view of this. So if you're telling me he heard something that uh, really overturned it, I would be surprised because there's no one else in the house that would have had a better view than the home plate umpire. Home plate is less than a foot away from him. Wow. So the runners are going to have to go back to where they were. And that is Hunter Lockwood going back to second base, and Stephen McRebecki going back to first. It would have been a run for Humber. It was originally ruled a fair ball, and the run came home. That was uh, Lockwood scoring, and it's overturned. And Raspanti comes back up to the plate now. 
And the count is two balls and two strikes because that has now just been ruled a foul ball as it went off the plate. So lots of activity here, but <laughs> it's now two balls, two strikes, two outs. The ball is on the ground to the first baseman, and Robinson comes up with it. He's got it, and that's the second out of the inning. So the runners do advance to second and third, and now there are two outs. So still no score in the ball game. I know it says it on the on the, the bug right now it, that it's a one nothing lead, but it's a 0-0 game still right now in the, uh, between Humber and St. Clair. I think uh, that moment kind of <laughs> teaches you right there that ball's hit, play it. <laughs> don't uh, don't sit around, and wait for it. Because if that ball was still was that if that ball was ruled fair, that's and that's one run and Humber has the lead, gold medal game. Aiden Murphy is the batter. He skies that one to center field. Spencer Morant is under it, looking into the sun. He's got it. The inning is over, and the Humber Hawks do not score. They strand two. Thought they had a run on a controversial play a few moments ago, but St. Clair holds the fort, and we go to the bottom of the third inning. No score between the Humber Hawks and the St. Clair Saints. What did you think on that last play there? Like, I, I didn't see it hit plate. I heard plate. But I'm... I'm still trying to figure it out. You know, it all happens so fast. You know, the ball comes off the bat, and you and you you, you hear a sound, and we we have a view of uh, on the right side of the uh, the diamond here. We're pretty close to home plate, but uh, at the same time, there's a lot of dirt on home plate. We can't really see it clearly, as uh, as during the course. You know, the, the the umpire will clear the plate off every once in a while during the course of a game. But right now. We can hardly even see home plate. Um, but the way that sounded, it did sound like the ball came off the bat of Justin Raspati and uh, and hit the plate and, and then rolled along the first baseline but stayed in fair territory. The Saints instantly thought it was a foul ball mm -hmm. because nobody reacted to it instantly for, um, uh, for, for defensively. And the ball was, okay, there's a live ball. And then the first baseman, uh, Robinson, came in to, oh, okay, it's a live ball, I guess. Yeah. And then they went and, and, and got the out. But uh, the base runner who was on second, that was uh, uh, Lockwood, Hudson Lockwood, decided to chance it and come home to score. And uh, once, uh, the first, once the out was recorded, Robinson threw home. And then the, the Hawks thought they had that first run. But uh, all for naught. The uh, four umpires talked about it. They talked about it at length. Yeah. And then they overturned the decision. You, know, mean, you don't see four umpires in no. many of these games. So no, no, no. you've got four <laughs> of them here. Heads up, heads up play by Hudson Lockwood, though. He was, uh, he was at, he, like I said, he was at second there. And uh, he made it around the score on a ball that made the pitcher's mound. Obviously, of course, he didn't score because of yeah, play was pulled back. So we go to the bottom of the third inning, and the batter is Hunter Appleyard, and he squared to bunt, took it back, but it's over the plate for strike one. Appleyard's first plate appearance of the game. And he swings and misses it, strike two from Dalton Brownlee. No score in the ball game here, bottom of the third, Saints looking to win this game and capture the gold medal in the OCAA as Appleyard takes high. Just the one hit in the ball game so far for St. Clair. No runs in one hit. Three hits for Humber at this point. The one two is on the ground, hit to the shortstop. Throwing over to first and it's not in time as Appleyard's speed is just too much for David Boato to throw him out. Good effort by the shortstop, but great speed by Appleyard and the Saints of a base runner. You know, you saw him, Appleyard, come out of the box, and he was it was a little bit slow. I didn't think there was really much of a chance on him, but all of a sudden he turns on the Jets and he just zooms down the line. And he got down there in plenty of time. Oh, he did, yeah. Great effort by Boato, though, as he had to range to his left and throw on the run. It was a, it was a good 
good try by the shortstop defensively, but uh, just too much speed there. Yeah, it really was. And that's uh, that's another thing that St. Clair has in excess. Good speed. <laughs> so that'll turn the lineup over to Carter Ray, the second baseman. Second plate appearance of the game. He lays down the bunt. Bounces to Brownlee. He'll throw to first, and it's not in time. There's more speed again. High octane speed for the Saints. Yeah. So it was a, a bunt, single, and now it's two on with nobody out, and here comes Josh Anderson. Boy, a couple of infield singles here for the Saints. Have Has the uh, St. Clair team in business in the bottom of the third, no score. Mm -hmm. Let's see if Anderson swings away or tries to lead on a bunt here with first and second, nobody out. And he does look to bunt, takes it back. It's, you know what, if uh, if one person can do it, why not me, you know? And we've already seen Anderson speed all weekend too, so. <laughs> he's the, I think he's the fastest one on the team. First and second, nobody out. Saints threatening here in the bottom of the third. Dalton Brownlee's pitch. And again, Anderson squares to bunt and takes it back, and it's 2-0. and Now, this could be uh, in two situations, because he's putting it down pretty early. It looks like he's going to try for a sack, sacrifice bunt, but uh, I don't really know if it's really a sacrifice bunt when you got the uh, speed like Anderson. The 2-0 pitch. He does get the bunt down. This is going to be a tough one again for Brownlee. He can't pick it up. Throws it down the line, and Anderson is safe. Three infield singles, and the bases are loaded with nobody out. And here comes Colin Robinson. As a pitcher right now, uh, Dalton Brownlee, I can only assume he is furious. <laughs> you know what, you, you, sometimes you gotta tip your cap to hitters, you know, who like who square the ball up, who you know hit a good pitch and that, but uh, there's something just about infield singles and just uh, exposing like bun defenses just really pisses you off <laughs> as a pitcher. Well, we saw Appleyard beat out the infield single to short for the to get on to lead this inning off. And then we saw Carter Ray lay down a bunt. And he beat that out. And then we see Josh Anderson lay down a bunt. And he beats that out to load the bases with nobody out. And it'll be Colin Robinson, the power hitting number three hitter for St. Clair. Robinson is 0 for 1 in the ball game. He flied out to center. But a scoring opportunity here for the Saints as they smell blood. Mound visit with Brownlee is over. We are ready to go. First pitch is inside to Colin Robinson, ball one. Now, I don't think we'll see Robinson attempt to bunt here. <laughs> so, you know what? I was I was going to make a joke here. I was like, you know what? I think it would be really funny if uh, he, <laughs> he tried showing bunt first pitch. Just too much power here for Robinson. <laughs> Looking to connect, and he does. Hits it to left center field. Base hit. That'll score one. That will score two runs. Saints two, Humber no score. Colin Robinson with a two run single. And head coach uh, Troy Black's coming out. It looks like uh, Dalton Brownlee's day on the mound is uh, gonna be done here. So two runs come in, Appleyard scores, Carter Ray scores. Two nothing Saints, bottom of the third. And Brownlee is done for the day. And as, as we knew, you know, he threw yesterday through 56 pitches. He's probably close to 40 or so pitches here in this game. And he just got touched for a two-run single by Colin Robinson to break the Saints out in front here in the third inning, 2 nothing St. Clair. Yeah, you know what, uh, you know, kudos to Dalton Brownlee. He was, uh, he, he pitched well, it's just unfortunate that uh, when you have a team that is just, they can do so many different things. They're, they, they're gonna find weaknesses as soon as they find that weakness. It's like sharks and they smell blood in the water, they're gonna swarm. The new pitcher will be right-hander Cam Hibbs. Jersey number 21, a fourth year player for the Hawks. Made three appearances during the season with a record of 0-1. 
Just four and a third innings pitched. Pitched to an earned run average of 646. But for Humber, we, we you know we know that a lot of the other members of their of their pitching staff are not probably not available in this game. We've seen Shane O'Keefe pitch. We've seen Corey Vandergraaff pitch. Uh, Dylan Cardoso, Eric Alcarez pitched this morning. Zwartz has pitched. Curtis King, Maxim Skor, Skorpodsky pitched this morning, and so did Braden Taylor. There's just there aren't a lot of options in a tournament like this. This is Humber's fifth game, but only St. Clair's third game. So. Hibbs is going to have to try and do a job here to keep the Hawks in the ball game. Yeah, he's going to have to uh, pull out some magic here to try and stop uh, stop the bleeding here. A two nothing game is nothing, especially for well, I mean either way, two nothing is nothing. Especially with Humber, with the, with the firepower they have on offense, um, and we, we've seen them, they they can strike at will at times. Now they didn't. They didn't manage to do that in the uh, in the last inning. They did get t two runners on, but were not able to score mm -hmm. uh, back in the top of this inning. And now St. Clair loaded the bases with nobody out on three infield singles, and then Colin Robinson delivering there with a a solid base hit to left center to bring home two runs. The Saints will send Henry Real will come up now uh, to face Cam Hibbs. He is one for one in the ball game, singled back in the first inning with a very solid hit to left field. Henry Real is was the led, led the Saints this year in all kinds of categories. Exactly who you want up here. Exactly. Anderson at second, Robinson at first, nobody out here in the third inning, and a big cut from Henry Real, strike one. Let the dogs loose on that one. He was, <laughs> he was all in on that. Count his own one to Henry Real. The old one taken off speed in there for a strike 0 and 2. You can see him wince uh, you can see Real win wince at himself there. He's just like well for lack of better words crap. <laughs> Cam Hibbs really looking for an out here. The Hawks desperate to get an out on the board. Here's the 0-2. It is popped up and will go out of play. Count remains 0-2. Josh Anderson is the runner at second. Colin Robinson is at first. Two runs in already here for the Saints in the bottom of the third. It is two nothing St. Clair lead. Looking for the gold medal. Pitch is high. One and two. St. Clair looking to blow it open here. Hibbs shakes off a couple of pitches and now he's ready. The one, two. Hit right up the middle. Base hit to center. Anderson is on his horse around third and will come in to score the third run of the game. St. Clair, three. Humber, nothing. Well, that, uh, <laughs> that ball was uh, truly scorched right back up the middle. No chance for anybody in the infield to get to that one. Right through between second base and short, right over the second base bag. So now first and second, still nobody out. Three nothing St. Clair. Hibbs will fire in a strike. The batter is Inik Watts. He's 0 for 1 in the game, flight out to left field to end the first. Hibbs is ready, and that is on the ground. Possible double play ball here. They will get one run at first. No throw over to, to uh, out at second, rather. They did not throw the ball over to first, so it's a fielder's choice. First out of the inning. It does move up Robinson to third base. 
Riel is retired, and Watts will be on first with the fielder's choice. A much needed out there for the Hawks. Hudson Lockwood fielding that ball and throwing it over to David Boato at, at, uh, at short, covering second base. But uh, Boato did not release to go. And we will see a stolen base attempt here by Watts, and he's in there as they were looking down at third just in case Robinson came down. So it's a stolen base from for, for Watts. Second and third now with one out. Riley Briggs is the batter. He's 0 for 1 in the game with a strikeout. Humber defense coming tight in, looking to get the runner out at the plate. Pitch is low, count is one and one. Three runs already here for the Saints in the bottom of the third inning. Cam Hibbs with the 1-1. One -one. Just misses. Just off the plate. Took a little bit off of that, and uh, Hawks looking for that call. They didn't get it. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not too sure of that miss. I thought he set up dead middle, but it, hey, he might have set up outside. Robinson at third, Watts at second. Briggs is the batter. Two and one is the pitch swung and fouled to the left side. Two and two. Five consecutive hits started this inning for the Saints to bring in the first three runs of the ball game. First three hits were all infield singles. A couple of bunts. Two and two pitch is lifted to right field and it's well fouled to the right side. Count remains two and two. Well, he was definitely sitting on the off speed there. Wow, just, uh, just a little out front. We'll do it again. Two balls, two strikes to Riley Briggs. Runners at second and third and one out. That ball is on the ground to first and it's past Aiden Murphy into right field for a base hit. One run is in. They will hold Watts at third. Sixth hit of the inning and the Saints lead it now 4 nothing. So now runners at the corners with one out. The batter is Spencer Moran. And he is 0 for 1 in the ball game. He struck out in the second. 4 nothing. St. Clair here now in the bottom of the third inning. With the infield in there, Aiden Murphy was not able to come up with the ball as it rolled into right field. And that scored Robinson. The first four batters in this inning for St. Clair have all scored. 4-0 Saints. Runner goes from first, ball is taken for a strike and it's a stolen base for Briggs as the Hawks do not throw down to second. Thought about throwing it down to third but Watts was easily back into third base so there was no throw. Count is 0-1. Cam Hibbs. On in relief of Dalton Brownlee here in the third inning. That ball is fouled away 0-2. Spencer Morin is the eighth batter of the inning so far for St. Clair. Six hits in this inning so far for the Saints. Four runs are in. And they have runners at second and third with one out. Looking for more. That ball just popped up in the infield. Shortstop, David Boato is there and he will catch it for the second out of the inning. Battling the sunshine. Huge out there for the Hawks. Two away. So Patrick Kibble will come up now. He is the ninth batter of the inning. He is 0 for 1 in the game. He grounded out to the pitcher, Dalton Brownlee, 
in the second. Brownlee is now out of the game and Cam Hibbs on the mound for the Hawks. Trying to end the damage here at four runs. Hibbs is ready and will fire it in there low for ball one. Three consecutive infield singles let started this inning and the Saints using their speed to beat them out at first base every time. That set all of this up. Second and third, two out. Here's the 1-0. On the ground to third. Playable ball for Justin Raspanti. He throws it over to first. Aiden Murphy cannot scoop it up again. And it's another run for St. Clair. The Hawks were almost out of the inning as Raspanti threw it to first. It came up short. And Aiden Murphy tried to scoop it out of the dirt, but it bounced away from him. So it's now 5-0 St. Clair. Kibble is safe at first. Watts comes in to score on that play. And Briggs advanced to third. So first and third, two out now, 5-0 St. Clair. The batter is Appleyard. And he skies that one to right side and Aiden Murphy catches it in foul territory for the final out of the inning. But what an inning it was for the St. Clair Saints. Five runs on six hits. There was one error and we've played three. St. Clair in the driver's seat looking for the gold medal here in this game. They lead it after three. Five, nothing. So we go to the fourth inning here at Kinsman Stadium in Oshawa. Brian Oliver along with Jacob Ebbs. Glad you could join us for the live stream coverage of the OCAA 2021 Men's Baseball Championships. It's been a great weekend of baseball. We have great conditions here this afternoon for this gold medal game between the St. Clair Saints and the Humber Hawks. And as we've been mentioning is in this double knocko tournament, the Saints have not lost a game yet, so they have the advantage. If they win this game, It'll be Humber's second loss, and St. Clair will capture the gold medal. Humber needs to win this game in order to stay alive. If they do win this game and come back from the 5 nothing deficit, then there would be a final game following this one later this afternoon, and that would be the sudden death gold medal game. But the Humber Hawks have a huge mountain to climb right now as they go into the fourth inning, trailing at 5 nothing. Five runs in the third inning for St. Clair to break this one open. And the Hawks will need their offense to come alive here if they want to get back into it. It'll be the five, six, and seven hitters for the Hawks. Starting with Jacob Turner, and he looks at ball one from Michael Hamlin. Turner fouls that one off to the left side for a strike. One ball and one strike. Turner is one for one in the ball game. He's singled in the second. He's the designated hitter. Hawks are the visiting team. In their blue jerseys. Saints are in white. They are the home team. There's a pitch taken for a ball, two and one. Saints were the West Division champions with a record of 12 and two. And with that better record, are the home team in this game. That ball is lifted high to left field. And coming in to catch it is Patrick Kibble for the first out of the inning as the shortstop Josh Anderson went back and so came over uh, Spencer Morin. They had plenty of uh, support there, but Kibble makes the catch for the first out of the inning, one away. And that'll, that'll bring up David Boato, who is one for one in the ball game. He's singled in the second. And the Hawks 
down 5 nothing here in the fourth inning. Need base runners. Ball one from Michael Hamlin. No runs so f uh, if for Humber so far with just three hits. There's a swing and a miss, strike one. Hamlin is certainly in a groove here. He has retired the last four batters in a row. And there's a swing and a miss for strike two. Bases are empty. One away here, top of the fourth inning. Humber trailing at 5 nothing, Trying to hold on to hopes for a three-peat in the OCAA. That ball is hit on the ground to third base. Enick Watts is up with it. We'll throw it on to first. Plenty of time. Two away. And the beat goes on for Michael Hamlin. Now five consecutive set aside, Jake. Yeah, you know what? With uh, the five run in the bottom half there, you can see St. Clair with just a little bit of light to them right now. Like they're just kind of, you know, it's, it's stress free right now. They're doing their job, but, you know, the pressure's off right now. And you can really see that in Hamlin. Hamlin's just delivering pitch after pitch, working fast, and just getting his team back in the dugout. And the Saints can, they, they, they can start to see the finish line there. They can, they're starting to feel it as Tyrus Bath lifts that ball high to the right side and fouls out of play. He's quickly behind 0 2. But uh, the Saints know if they win this game, they are the champions. 5 nothing lead as we mid head to the middle inning here, the fourth inning, and that ball hits Tyrus Bath. as a hit by pitch. So it's a two-out base runner for the Hawks. And it'll bring up Robert Champion. And the Hawks certainly need a lot of base runners. Hamlin had a word with the umpire there after that pitch, and maybe, not sure, maybe he thought that uh, the, the batter, Tyrus Bath, didn't make enough of an effort to get out of the way of that pitch, not sure. Yeah, it's a, it's a very tough call, and it's also one of the judgment ones that you have there. It's, uh, unless you really lean, lean into it, I don't think many umpires are going to call it. Yeah, it usually has to be pretty obvious where somebody almost physically leans out and goes out over the plate to you know, stick their arm out or elbow pad or something. Robert Champion is the batter. He is 0 for 1 in the ball game. Count is 1 and 0. He'll look at a strike. Champion lined out to first base in a crucial part of this game. At the time, Humber had runners at first and second. And a great play, a line drive snag by Colin Robinson ended that threat. That was back in the second inning. Mm -hmm. Runner goes. Ball is hit to left field. Carrying back Patrick Kibble on his... As he backpedals and hauls it in for the third out of the inning. He made two outs in that inning in left field. And the Humber Hawks are unable to score. Midway through the fourth inning, St. Clair leading it 5 nothing. Bottom of the fourth inning coming up here at Kinsman Stadium in Oshawa. Brian Oliver along with Jacob Ebbs. Cam Hibbs will stay in the game as the pitcher for the Humber Hawks. And they are facing a 5-0 deficit here as the Saints come up to bat in the bottom of the fourth inning. St. Clair with five runs on six hits in the third inning to take control of this game. And... They will send up the top of the order here in the bottom of the fourth with Carter Ray, Josh Anderson, and Colin Robinson. Michael Hamlin has done a great job for the Saints so far. Four innings pitched. He's only given up three hits. Yeah, exactly. He's, uh, he's doing a hell of a job on the mound. It kind of contributes uh, to his control. It's, he's just been going after hitters, establishing strike one and working from there. And uh, I think he has full confidence in his defense, no matter what, that his defense is going to be there to bail him out if things, uh, things get rough. 
Dalton Brownlee started this game for Humber on the mound. But we know that he did pitch yesterday and threw 56 pitches in a game against Seneca. And he was lifted in this game for Cam Hibbs. And Hibbs will remain in the game. <laughs> and try and keep it to a five run lead. We know Humber can explode with offense at any time but they are starting to run out a little bit of time. They have no runs in this game. It's not often you see Humber with no runs through four innings. Mm -hmm. But right now they're gonna have to focus on some defense and some pitching to try and just keep it a five run deficit. St. Clair will send up Carter Ray. They are in the white jerseys. Carter Ray wears jersey number 19. You see him stepping in now. Cam Hibbs is ready. Ray in the ball game is one for two. Struck out, singled, and scored in that five-run inning in the third inning for St. Clair. Takes a strike. Takes a ball, one ball and one strike. In that last inning, the third inning for the Saints, we saw Carter Ray come up with a, a runner on first. He laid down a bunt and, and has it for the second out. So Anderson gives that one a ride, but now Rebecca is equal to the task, and there are quickly two away, and that'll bring up Colin Robinson, first baseman for the Saints. And Robinson, as you mentioned, Jake, had that, that big hit, that single, that... Got St. Clair on the board. It was a two-run single back mm -hmm. in the third. Yeah, he absolutely tallywhacked that one. First pitch to Robinson is outside. Ball one. Bottom of the fourth. St. Clair batting here. Two out. Nobody on. Pitch to Robinson is inside. Tight. Ball two. Last minute, get out of the way of that pitch. That would have struck him right in the elbow. Here's the 2-0 pitch to Colin Robinson. And that's in there. Two and one is the count to Robinson. That is ripped to left field, base hit over the third baseman. And it is the a two out single. So the Saints do get a two out single, but they strand it. Four complete here in Oshawa at Kinsman Stadium. It is St. Clair, five, Humber, no score. So we move right along here now to the fifth inning. St. Clair in control at the moment. Five nothing is the score. If the Saints hold on in this game, they are the 2021 OCAA men's baseball champions. Is the bronze medal winner this year. First medal in the program history for the Seneca Sting. These two teams will are battling it out here for gold and silver. And St. Clair right now has the inside track on the gold and trying to bring that banner back to Windsor for the first time in four years. If they can hold off the Hawks here as we go to the fifth inning, it'll be the number nine hitter. Lockwood will lift the ball to left center field. It's in there for a base hit. Hudson Lockwood is two for two in the ball game with a couple of singles. Leadoff hitter is aboard for the Hawks. And that'll bring up Stephen Nowrebecki, the OCAA batting champion. If the Hawks are going to get back into it, they need base runners and nothing better than getting your leadoff guy on. No, exactly. It's uh, bottom of the lineup has done a, a very good job of just getting themselves into a good spot. 
And then obviously you can't really have uh, a better uh, two or three guys to go to than uh, on the Humber Hawks. Now Rebecca will foul that one out of play. First pitch from Michael Hamlin is a foul ball, strike one. Hamlin, starting pitcher, still in the ball game for the Saints. And now Rebecca lays down a bunt, but it, it's down in the dirt and it kicks foul to the left side, strike two. Looks like they're trying to take a page from uh, the St. Clair handbook. Yeah, it certainly worked for St. Clair back in the third inning when they scored five times, twice reaching on infield, those bunts on the infield. Now Rebecca doing anything he can to get his team going here. That one goes foul, now he's down 0-2. Here's the 0-2 pitch. It is lifted to left field. Kibble is going back, 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 and oh, he just catches it. Just catches it. It looked like it was just about to go over his head, and he hauls it in for the out, one away. I'll tell you, that's not really how you're, as an outfielder, <laughs> that root efficiency in the turn was, uh, you know, non-existent. <laughs> that was awful, but uh, at least he was able to make the grab. I think he just thought the ball was just coming straight to him, and it just kept sailing and sailing and sailing. Kibble has made three catches in the last two innings in left field. He's been busy. One away here now for Humber, and it's Dennis DeBanning. He'll take an inside pitch for ball one. DeBanning in this game is 0 for 2. He struck out in the first. He flied out to center in the third. Runner at first is Hudson Lockwood. Humber trailing this game 5-0. We are in the top of the fifth inning. Hamlin's pitch is hit to center field, going back to, to center field. Not going to get it is the center fielder, Spencer Morin. And it'll be a double for DeBanning. So that ball just carried, carried, carried. And Spencer Morin, th we thought he might have a chance to catch it, but it just went over out of his reach. And it's a... It's a one-out double for DeBanning, and the Hawks have runners at second and third here with one out, and a chance to get back into the game. Yeah, that was another <laughs> really uh, not as strong uh, route by the center fielder there of uh, Spencer Morin. If he just put his head down, ran back, he knew that it's Dennis uh, DeBanning has a ton of power, so if you just put your head down and run back, he actually does have a chance to get that ball. The batter is Justin Raspati. Ball is in the dirt, great block by the catcher, Real, to protect it from going past him. Count is 1-0. and oh. Runners at second and third here with one away for the Hawks. They need runs. They trail it 5-0 to the shortstop. Josh Anderson will fire it over to the first for the out. It's an RBI ground out. The Hawks are on the board. It's now 5-1 as coming in to score is Lockwood. Moving up to third on the play is DeBanning, and that brings up Aiden Murphy. At this point, you think, uh, Jake, you know, that uh, Anderson, the, the, the Saints are happy to trade a run for an out. Yeah, exactly. I totally agree with that. They've, uh, they've kind of gotten themselves into a little bit of trouble. I think they're okay if conceding a run there for uh, the second out, and now it's, uh, you know, there's just a pitch away at this point. So two away here, runner at third. The batter is Aiden Murphy. He is 0 for 2 in the game. Swing and a miss at strike one. Humber trying to bring home a second run here with Dennis DeBanning at third base here. Two away though. Murphy has struck out and flied out. That is hit over, no it's not, it's caught by Hinnick Watts at third base. He had to go up the ladder to snag that and it was a great catch because if that guy's over him, it's definitely a run. Mm -hmm. Defense coming up big there for the Saints and the Hawks will only get the one run. So we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. It is now a 5-1 ball game. St. Clair five, Humber one.
Bottom of the fifth inning coming up here in Oshawa at Kinsman Stadium. Brian Oliver along with Jacob Ebbs. The St. Clair Saints have a 5-1 lead over the Humber Hawks in trying to keep it within reach. Humber Hawks trying to stay alive here and keep their hopes alive for a third consecutive provincial championship. The Saints are looking to reclaim gold for the first time since 2017. For St. Clair in the bottom of the fifth inning. It will be the five, six, and seven hitters. Enoch Watts will lead things off. We well, just noticed the scoreboard. <laughs> oh, the, the scoreboard in left field has gone out. But uh, we'll, uh, we, know, we can tell you it's a 5-1 game here for the Saints in the fifth inning as, wow, Watts just rips that to the right side. Foul ball. That was hit hard. Watts in the ball game is one for two. Sorry, he's 0 for two. Reached on a fielder's choice and scored in the third. Count is 0-1 as the scoreboard comes back on and he will take a ball. One ball, one strike to Inik Watts. Saints try and add on here in the fifth inning. Four run lead. That ball is hit to right field between first and second. Base hit. And Watts is on. It's a leadoff single for the Saints. And that'll bring up the DH, Riley Briggs. That Briggs is so hot right now. Come on, Briggs. Unofficially the ninth hit of the ball game so far for the Saints. And Briggs will look at ball one from Cam Hibbs. The second pitcher of the ball game for the Saints. Dalton Brownlee started things off. Hibbs trying to keep his team in the game here and give the Hawks another chance. Runner goes, throw down to second, flies way off the catcher's hand and will go into center field. Watts will wisely stay at second base. Stolen base though, second of the game for Watts. He's in scoring position. St. Clair with a 5-1 lead here in the bottom of the fifth inning. The 2-0 pitch coming to Briggs. And that's in there for a strike. That's just a case of uh, he set up there and he Hit the spot perfectly. Watts is the base runner at second. He's in scoring position. Nobody out here in the bottom of the fifth. St. Clair five, Humber one. Cam Hibbs delivers, swing and a miss, strike two. Hibbs came on back in the third inning. So he's now on his second time through the order now. All five runs so far for St. Clair came in the third inning. The count is two and two. Swing and a miss, strike three. With authority, Cam Hibbs gets the strikeout and that is his first strikeout of the ball game. And it's the first out of the inning. And Spencer Morin will come up now, the center fielder, 0 for two in the ball game. Looking to, home, looking to bring home another run here for St. Clair in the bottom of the fifth inning. He is struck out and popped out. And he will fall off the first pitch from Cam Hibbs. As a pitcher here, Jake, you're just looking to keep your team in the ball game and, and, and hope your offense gets another chance. Yeah, exactly. You can only do as much as you can do in this situation as a pitcher coming in relief. It's a, it's a tall order because obviously, of course, you feel responsible if uh, you give any more runs. 
uh, you're the reason why the team loses. But it's you, you got to stay smart and you got to stay simple. Just work on out one, work on out two, work on out three, get the boys in the dugout. Inik Watts led off the inning here for St. Clair with a single. Then he stole second. That's where he is right now. Count is 0-1 to Spencer Morin. Ground ball to the right side. Aiden Murphy is not able to come up with it, and everybody is safe. That ball took a nasty hop on the first baseman, and Moran is safe at first, and Watts comes down to third. For runners at the corners now with one out. Just real, real tough play there. Yeah, it really was. It was just kind of a situation of letting the ball play you there. And uh, with how with how tough uh, the ground is, you've really got it. You can't be expecting just a normal ground ball, no hops, no no surprises, nothing. It's been a tough day at first base for Aiden Murphy. Mm -hmm. He's had to scoop a number of uh, throws, or tried to scoop a number of throws at first base as well. The runner goes from first, and it's a stolen base for Moran as he goes down to second base. The Humber catcher, Bath, elects not to throw at all as they look Watts back to third base. Second and third now, one out. Humber Hawks, of course, they're looking just don't make a throwing error. 0 1 pitch is high. One ball, one strike to Patrick Kibble. He's 0 for 2 in the ball game. He is grounded to the pitcher. He reached on an error to third in the third inning. Watts at third, Moran at second. 5 1 Saints. And that's high. 2 and 1. There is action in the bullpen for the Hawks down the left field line. We see. Two balls and one strike to Patrick Kibble. Trying to add on to the St. Clair lead here. And he will look at ball three. Well, I mean, I guess if there's any good news in this situation, loading the bases would not be the worst thing in the world, putting a force anywhere. That being said, you don't want to give them any more chances than, uh, than they already have. Four-run deficit is, is hard enough to climb out of. They don't want it to be any deeper. The Hawks don't. 3-1 mm -hmm. pitch to Patrick Kibble is a ball in play. It's hit to the right fielder. Might be a sacrifice fly opportunity. The ball comes into the plate. Going to have a close play, but it's a sacrifice fly as Watts comes in to score with his great speed tagging. At third, coming in to score a sack fly for Patrick Kibble makes it 6-1 St. Clair. Yeah, you know what? I, you know what? That's what good teams do. They play small ball right there. I'm not sure if that's exactly what uh, you wanted to do there, but that was a pretty decent fly ball. And uh, knowing the speed down at third base, easy run for them, 6-1. Spencer Moran, by the way, tagged at second and came down to third on that, so... Now a runner at third with two out for St. Clair. The batter is Appleyard. That ball is hit to right field. Right fielder going back, back, trying over to catch head. it. It's over his head. That is going to score at least one run. Appleyard is past second. Going into third. Here comes the throw. He is safe. Triple for Appleyard. It is now a 7-1 ball game in favor of St. Clair. RBI triple for Appleyard. He uh, he really crushed that ball there. That one just carried and carried and carried. A lot of, that's what a lot of balls are doing right now. It's just the outfielders are not uh, are not prepared for it. Sails way over his head down into the corner, right by, down by the 324 sign down in right. And that'll bring a mound visit here. And the Humber Hawks looks like they're going to change pitchers again. So that's the end of the line for Cam Hibbs this afternoon. And we will now see another pitcher. I think it's Dylan. Sorry, correction. Number five coming into the ball game. And 
we will see Ian Swartz come into the ball game. Seven one St. Clair. We are in the bottom of the fifth inning. Two runs across here in this inning for St. Clair on two singles, a sack fly, and a triple. And Appleyard, who just hit that triple, is at third base with two out. It'll turn the lineup over as well. Carter Ray will be the batter in just a moment as we get ready to see Ian Zwartz. It'll be his second appearance of the tournament so far. He made two appearances in the regular season and tossed three innings. Not a lot of data to share, but he did strike out three and walked one. He's a second year pitcher. And right now the Hawks just trying to trying to stay alive as best as they can, but they are now down by six runs yeah. here in the fifth inning. It's, it, like I said, it's limiting the damage at this point. Uh, <laughs> we talked a moment ago about how, you know, a four-run deficit's already hard enough to score, you know, against, against any team, but especially against a, a team with a, you know, with a line of pitching like St. Clair. Uh, but now it's just limiting the bleeding and, you know, and get them out of the inning, reset. Look back at the regular season, these two teams uh, split their doubleheader back in the regular season. But uh, St. Clair finished at 12-2. and two. Humber was 11-3. and three. Because of that, St. Clair with the better record, they didn't have to play on Thursday in the sudden death quarterfinal games. Mm -hmm. uh, but Humber did, and they had to face George Brown. They won that game. You look back at the regular season, two of the three Humber losses came to the Seneca Sting. And... That, if those results are different in that, in those games, Humber might have been the first place team and maybe St. Clair would have had to have played in the quarterfinal games on Thursday. But Humber is in some serious trouble right now in the fifth inning. As Wartz is ready to go, the batter is Carter Ray and he looks at ball one. I think at this point for St. Clair, it's all about trying to get closer and closer to that mercy run limit. That's true, if they can get a 10 run lead, the game would be over. Pitch from Zwartz is high, ball two, two and oh to Carter Ray. Ray is one for three in the ball game, singled and scored in the five run third inning for the Saints. Zwartz fires in, swing and a miss, strike one. That was, that was a power hack right there. Carter Ray, Coming up here with a runner at third base, two out. That is Appleyard at third base, who just tripled home the seventh run. Pitch taken, strike. Two balls, two strikes to Carter Ray. If he reaches, we will see the shortstop, Josh Anderson. Zwartz with the 2 2 pitch on the ground to the shortstop. Has a chance, Boato throws it to first. Aiden Murphy with a nice stretch, and he records the out. Nice play by the Humber defense there as the shortstop throws out the speedy Carter Ray to retire the side. But it's two runs on three hits for St. Clair in the fifth. Five innings in the books. St. Clair in control. Saints seven, Hawks one. It looks like St. Clair is bringing on a, a new pitcher, number 28. And uh, It'll be Jacob Rasheagel coming on for his second appearance of the tournament. We saw him pitch yesterday. I believe he pitched in the game against Durham. Durham College, yeah, I yeah. believe it was. Jacob Rasheagel is a third-year pitcher for the Saints. Throws from the right side. Had an earned run average of 2.33 during the regular season in three appearances with a one loss record of 2-0 and through one complete game. He will come on in relief of Michael Hamlin who started the game. Hamlin goes five innings, gives up only one run on five hits. 
So a great outing for Michael Hamlin. Mm -hmm. Fantastic and outing. He's the pitcher of record right now for the Saints in this gold medal game. If the Saints win this game, they are the champions. If the Hawks are able to come back in this game, it would force a sudden death playoff after this game, half an hour later. The Saints would like to just end things right here if they can. They don't want to have to get into a sudden death game and go deeper into their pitching either. So uh, the Saints, six outs away right now from a championship. Jacob uh, Rajigal, when uh, he played against uh, pitch against Durham yesterday, he gave, he got hit a little bit and he gave up a few runs. I believe he gave up three in his two inning appearance against Durham, but uh, he really kind of got the job done and then opened the door for uh, Austin Olds, I believe, the uh, closer for uh, the Saints. So we're ready to go here in the top of the sixth inning, Humber. Trailing seven to one is the score. Seven one is is the lead for the Saints. And we're waiting for the music to go off here at the stadium, which has happened a few times this weekend. And we are ready to go. Jacob Turner will be the leadoff hitter. It'll be the five, six, seven hitters for this for the Humber Hawks here in the top of the sixth. First pitch from Rajigal is in the dirt. Ball one. Turner is the DH. He is one for two in the ball game. He singled in the second inning. He flied out to left in the fourth. Rashigal is ready. That ball is smoked to center field. That is a base hit. No doubter. Turner is two for three in the ball game, and the Humber Hawks have the leadoff hitter aboard here in the sixth inning. Trailing seven to one. Looking for base runners, but we know the Hawks can. We know the Hawks can score, and we know they have power. Yeah, all it takes is just a little bit of a spark. We haven't seen. Uh, I don't think we've seen the spark yet from Humber, but uh, I feel like if uh, this guy gets on here, second, first, no one out, I think that will be plenty of a spark that uh, Humber needs. David Boato is the hitter for the Hawks here. Short stop fouls away the first pitch from Rashigal. 0 1. Boato is 1 for 2 in the game. He singled in the second. He grounded out in the fourth. Hey, 7 1 lead here for, Hump, for St. Clair. St. Clair 7, Humber 1. And a big, big cut there from Boato. Comes up empty, it's 0-2. Jacob Turner is the base runner at first. Nobody out here. Top of the sixth inning. Hawks down by six. Fresh Eagle is ready. He looks over to the runner at first. And will throw it in off speed. Misses. One and two. Rajigal's having the same problem as he did yesterday, just trying to find the feel on the curveball. We saw it towards the end of his appearance. He did get a hold of it. Count is one and two to David Boato. And that's time the curveball works. Boato swings over it, and he is the first out of the inning, one away. Tyrus Bath will be the batter now for Humber. He is 0 for 1 in the game. He has struck out. He's been hit by a pitch. Humber trailing at 7-1. We are in the top of the sixth inning. Bath will look at strike one from Jacob Rashigal. Hawks needing base runners. The Humber catcher is ready. So is Rashigal. And the curveball misses. One and one. Bath just trying to get on base here. Move the lineup along. Humber did score one run back in the fifth inning, but they did strand one. 
The 1-1 one, one is in there for strike two. One ball and two strikes in that fifth inning. Lockwood got the run for Humber. And Aiden Murphy lined out the third base to end the threat. The one-two pitch is popped up to the right side and not playable. Count remains one and two. The one-two pitch from Rajigal is on the ground to third base, bounces up high for Watts, throws to second for one, on to first, double play! Five, four, three, double play. The inning is over as Bath hits into the double play and the Hawks will not score here in the sixth inning. And the Saints lead it, seven to one, now three outs away from the gold medal. Well, just as quickly as, uh, you know, a potential decent inning can come together, it'll quickly fade away. Well done by St. Clair Saints to quickly roll that one up. So no runs on one hit for Humber in that sixth inning, but a double play. by the infield of the Saints. Keeps it a six run lead. Seven to one, St. Clair. As we go to the bottom of the sixth inning, it'll be the two, three, and four hitters for the Saints. Six hits in the ball game for Humber. One run on six hits. And it's not a, sc it's not a, a score line you see very often for the Humber Hawks. No, it's... Uh there's, uh, there's very few games, and like going going through stats at the beginning of uh, the tournament, just kind of looking over you know, what the team's strong suits were. Humber ended up scoring on average around 10 runs a game. Seeing that uh, they, uh, they're only managing to get one across right now, just uh, it just shows how well they are at, how good they are. It's, you know, or how, how, sorry, how good St. Clair is at uh, shutting it down. These two teams were the top two hitting teams in the regular season in the OCAA. St. Clair scored 172 runs. Humber scored 159 runs. And no one else in the league scored more than 100. In fact, in third place was Durham with 94. Now, having said that, Fanshawe and Seneca only played 12 games. They did not get their doubleheader in due to bad weather. But uh, certainly, you know, 146 runs batted in for St. Clair. They batted 383. The Humber Hawks batted 350. So... You know, you've got the two best hitting teams in the OCAA here fighting it out for the gold medal as Josh Anderson comes up and will ground to the pitcher. Now throwing over to first and recovering just in time is Ian Swartz as Anderson is retired on a quick ground out to the pitcher, one away. One pitch, one out. You want to make your heart race <laughs> right there. <laughs> well, you know, you raise a good point though, Jake. You know, you know, as a pitcher, you're used to throwing on the mound, you're a little, you're elevated from the rest of the field, and then other times when you get the ball and you have to come off the mound, you're, you're, you're at a different level. Yeah. The batter is Colin Robinson. Takes a ball from Ian Swartz. 7-1 is the score in favor of St. Clair. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. Robinson is two for three in the ball game. And takes ball two. Two and oh. Robinson had the, right now, what, if it holds up, would be the game-winning RBI. The two-run single back in the third inning that broke the 0-0 tie. Robinson takes ball three. Ian Zwartz, the third pitcher of the ball game for the Humber Hawks here in the, now working in the sixth inning. And he's high with that one. It's a four-pitch walk. And uh, Robinson goes down to first base. And it's a one-out base runner. And that'll bring up the catcher, Henry Real. But getting back, Jake, to talking about uh, uh, pitchers, you know, you, c you come off the mound to field the ball. All of a sudden, you're, 
you're at a slightly different elevation. It's 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 not easy peasy lemon squeezy all the time. No, it's not. It, old guys like Mark Burley. I remember him back in the day, always winning the uh, you know the uh, Gold Glove. And, you know those guys make it so easy. Even guys like the big leagues, they have so much trouble with doing that because you're always on an angle throwing downhill, and that's really the only thing you're thinking about. You're not thinking about getting the ground ball back to you. That's a, more of a reaction play if that ever happens. And instead of throwing it home, you're throwing it to first. I, exactly. It's small things, but it's uh, baseball is a game of you know micro details, isn't it? The batter is Henry Real, the catcher. He is two for three in the ball game with a couple of singles, and he has popped out to short. Runner at first here for the Saints. Bottom of the sixth inning, they lead at seven-one. One away, and pitch taken. Two all, two balls and one strike. St. Clair with a six-run lead here in the sixth inning. They are the home team. They are in the white jerseys. That ball is hit to the shortstop, David Boato. He's got it, and that's an easy, fair catch for him behind short. Two away. So it's a... Second time in a row that uh, Real has popped to short. That's the second out of the inning. And it'll be Enik Watts. He takes a strike. Runner at first with two out. Saints up 7-1. Bottom of the sixth inning. Watts is one for two, one for three in the ball game with a single. Scored a couple of runs. Reached on the fielder's choice. He has two of the runs in this game as he fouls off the second offering from Ian Swartz. It's 0-2. Colin Robinson is on first base for St. Clair. He reached on a walk. Here's the 0-2 on the ground to the second baseman, and it goes right through. That is now playing at second base. That looks like to be Justin Raspanti. He was originally at third base to start the game. He's now at second base. So that goes, looked like it went right through the wickets there, Jake. Yeah, that went, uh, that went five hole. That's better. Five hole. That's yeah. better than wickets. So that'll be bringing up uh, Riley Briggs here, the DH who is one for three in the ballgame. Couple of strikeouts, he has singled. First and second now for St. Clair. Two out, bottom of the six, they lead at 7-1. Briggs pops it up, and it's a foul ball out of play. That will land, it'll stay within the stadium. None of the fans went after that. Usually in summer when there's, uh, you know, I guess when the Legionnaires are playing or anything like that, and there's always uh, kids from younger teams here that will always be running for it. They love a foul ball. Yeah, they do. <laughs> the 1-1 pitch is lifted. It's in foul territory on the left side. Lockwood makes a great oh, catch one. running on the run and catches it in foul territory, and that's the third out of the inning. So it's a, it's a foul out to the third baseman, and uh, there have been some defensive shifts there for the for the Hawks as Lockwood now at third base makes that catch and we saw we saw Respanti at second base. So no runs for St. Clair in the sixth inning. Six complete and it's last chance for the Humber Hawks here in the seventh inning. It is a 7-1 lead St. Clair over Humber. So Jacob Rashiga will stay in the ball game for the St. Clair Saints looking to close out St. Clair's first gold medal championship in four years. They have not won it since 2017. And Rashiga will try and 
take down the defending, two-time defending Humber champion Humber Hawks here in the seventh inning. 7-1 Seven is the score in favor of St. Clair. Looking at the Humber lineup right now, it'll be the eight, nine, and one hitters coming up for Humber. If they are able to get a number of base runners, they would see the heart of the order come up here. But uh, Jake, they're down six. They, they need a lot to go right here in the seventh inning. Yeah, they really do. They need to uh, they really need to sit on this guy's fastball and just drive it. Because if he has his curveball working, it's going to be really tough to do. So his curveball really does cut and dive a lot if he's getting on top of it properly as he should. But, you know, the Humber offense has, uh, has come through a number of times this weekend. We have seen them. They had, we saw them down six last night against the same St. Clair Saints and battled back to get within a couple of runs. But uh, they are going to need a lot of things to go right here in the seventh inning and extend this game. They trail it seven to one, and the Saints are three outs away from gold medal glory here at the 2021 championships. The leadoff hitter will be Robert Champion. And he is the right fielder. He's 0 for two in the ball game. He's lined out and he's flied out. Rashigal is ready. Big swing and a miss, strike one. One run on six hits so far for Humber in this ball game. The only run for Humber coming in the fifth inning. Champion takes a pitch, looked a little bit high but it's strike two. Dennis DeVanning was the only batter to knock in a run in this game. It was a, a double back in the fifth inning that scored Lockwood. 7-1, St. Clair, 0-2 pitch, taken, just missed. One ball and two strikes. Not, I have to assume that pitch is outside because that was lower than the last one. Jacob Rashigal trying to Close the deal here for the Saints in the seventh inning. 7-1 Seven St. Clair. Pitch is high. Two balls and two strikes. Robert Champion will be followed by Hudson Lockwood and then Stephen now Rebecca. Two balls, two strikes. Pitch swung on a miss, strike three. Second strikeout for Jacob Rashigal, one away, and the Saints are two outs away. St. Clair seven, Humber one. Rashigal. Is off the mound right now and waiting for the batter to come into the. He waited for the batter to come into the plate. Now the batter steps out. The batter is Hudson Lockwood. He is two for two in the ball game. He has scored the only run of the game so far for Humber. Pitch is low. Ball one. St. Clair Saints with five runs in the third and two more runs in the fifth. Humber's only run so far came in the fifth inning. 7-1 is the score. Pitch hits Lockwood. And that is a one-out base runner for the Humber Hawks. So Lockwood goes down to first and that brings the top of the order up. Steven Nabrabecki. He is 0 for 2 in the ball game. He has popped out, he has flied out, he has walked, and we are going to see a mound visit now as the uh, Saints are going to talk things over. They're pulling them. They're going to take Rashigal out of the ball game. Really? So out he comes. And we will see another St. Clair pitcher to try and close this one out. Austin Olds coming back in. It is. Austin Olds. I believe this will be his third appearance of the tournament. He came on the mound twice yesterday. I believe he came in both in the Durham game and last night. 
against the Humberhawks. So Olds will take things over here. He made three appearances in the regular season. 1.75 earned runner average. And they will put their trust in him to close things out here and try and lock down St. Clair's first championship in four years. The Hawks have a runner at first. Hudson Lockwood just was, was just hit by a pitch. It is a 7-1 ball game though. Lots of work to do for Humber if they're gonna get back into this. It'll be now Rebecca. Dennis DeBanning is on deck. If he reaches, Justin Raspanti will come up. But uh, you know, it looked like Rash looked like Rashigal was 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 firing well. I thought uh, Jake, you know, a couple strikeouts. Looked like he had good authority on his fastball, but uh, the, uh, the the Saints don't want to take any chances here. I guess maybe felt a little uncomfortable with the the hit by pitch there. I was watching Rashigal as. Uh Coach came out and uh, was talking to him, and all he was saying, he was just saying, no, 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 no. And then obviously, you know, a few expletives there that I can't say on the, on broadcast. I don't really, I don't agree with the decision to pull him. Um, I think that wasn't really the best call, but you're putting your closer, you might as well. Now Rebecca puts it down on the ground. They'll throw to second for one. Anderson on to first. Not in time. Almost a double play there as Olds gets the ground ball from now Rebecca. They get the force out at second, and now Rebecca is safe at first, but now there are two away, and the Saints are one out away from the championship. Fielder's choice for now Rebecca. Lockwood is out at second, and the last chance now is Dennis DeBanning. One for three in the ball game, fifth year player. Probably his last bat in a Hummer uniform. And he swings and misses at strike one. And yes, I was just thinking that too. As, this, as a fifth year player, and if the Hawks don't come back in this game, this would be his last at bat in a Humber uniform. Great career. Hoping to extend things here for the Hawks. 7 1 St. Clair. Now Rebecca goes. The ball is hit on the ground up the middle, and it's a base hit. Now Rebecca digs for third as Dennis DeBanning keeps the game going with a clutch two out single. He's down at first. Now Rebecca goes to third, runners at the corners with two away. That's just a good baseball player doing what good baseball players do. Yeah. Keep the game alive, he's not gonna go down. No, you're totally right there. Now Rebecca was running with the pitch and he is easily into third. So it's now runners at first and third with two away. Saints one out away from winning it here. And the batter is Justin Raspanti. He's 0 for 3 in the game. Pitch is high. They will throw down to third. And now Rebecca is just back in time. That would have been an awful way to end it for the Hawks. Yeah, it really would have. Getting picked off third. Count is 1-0 and oh to Raspanti. Don't need to make an out at third here if you're the Humber Hawks. You only have one out to play with. The 1-0 pitch is taken for a strike. One ball, one strike. Austin Olds trying to close it out here. Saints. So close to the gold medal. The 1-1 pitch to Rispati is taken and it misses. Ball two, two and one. Great now, pitch there, but yeah, absolutely. But Rispati did not offer at it. Two balls and a strike. Let's go. Let's go. If he can reach, Aiden Murphy is on deck. Here's the two-one. Taken for a strike. Two and two. And now Olds and the St. Clair Saints are one strike away from the championship. They lead it seven to one. Humber with runners at first and third, but they're down six. The 2-2 two -two pitch from Austin Olds. Here comes runner goes, taken for strike three. It is over. 
The St. Clair Saints, for the first time in four years, are the OCAA champions. They defeat the Humber Hawks 7-1. to one. St. Clair goes undefeated in the tournament. Coming here to Oshawa, winning yesterday over the Durham Lords, and then winning last night against Humber 7-5, and now today 7-1. And the Saints congratulate each other on the infield as the OCAA championship banner will shift from Toronto to Windsor once again. It is the sixth gold medal for St. Clair and the first one for the Saints program since 2017. The Humber Hawks, two-time defending champions, see their reign come to an end and they will have to settle for the silver medal. And we will see the medal presentations in just a moment and we will let you, uh, we'll, see, we'll see that here as the, uh, the presentations happen here at Kinsman Stadium. St. Clair 7, Humber 1. And really today, you know, Jake, it was, it really was all St. Clair, mm -hmm. particularly after that third inning. There was no score. We saw a series of infield hits with a couple of bunt singles. Speed, they say, sometimes kills in, in baseball. And the Saints used their speed to advantage there, beating out some infield plays. And then it was Colin Robinson with the big hit that got the ball rolling and they scored five in that third inning and held on for a 7-1 victory. Yeah, exactly. It was, uh, you really could see after that third inning that just the pressure kind of was uh, just alleviated after the third inning there and uh, everything became much easier and there was, no, uh, there was no problem after that. The Humber Hawks are the silver medalists and they will see their their awards presented in just a moment here at Kinsman Stadium. We will also hear about the tournament all-stars and the players of the game in just a moment. St. Clair won the championship 2013 and then for made it five consecutive years with 2017. They saw that string end in 2018 when the Humber Hawks won their first of two championships. But this time it is, it is not a gold ending for, for Humber. Regular season, the Saints were 12 and two, the Hawks were 11 and three. Humber had to play an extra game on Thursday in a sudden death game, that elimination game against George Brown, which they won. St. Clair, sixth gold medal in program history. For Humber, this will be their seventh medal. They've won two golds, two silvers, and three bronze. The only year that Humber did not win a medal was 2014. Michael Hamlin is the player of the game for St. Clair, who is the starting pitcher and is the pitcher of record. He gets the win in this championship game. And for Humber, Dennis DeBanning in his final collegiate game is the player of the game for the Humber Hawks. He was two for four in the ball game. And accepts the award in a losing cause for the Humber Hawks. But he has been a two-time champion, as have many of the members of the Humber Hawks, including Aiden Murphy, Stephen now Rebecca. So congratulations to Roberto Duncan of the St. Clair Saints, winning the gold medal in his first year with the program. 
and it's been a tough thing for all year long for for all of the programs in the OCAA because of the uh, the COVID last year there was no season and a lot of programs were disrupted because of that a lot of players that would have otherwise played last year didn't get to play in a season of course a lot of first year players in the OCAA this year it also was a year where we saw the Centennial Colts join the league they won three games this year in their inaugural season didn't make the playoffs, but the Centennial Colts joined the league, and we also saw the Lambton Lions win their first game of their program history. The Lambton Lions in their second year. They didn't win in their first year in 2019, but this year they did pull off a couple of victories. Congratulations to Lambton on that. They did not make the playoffs. Also, for the OCAA, they will be expanding next year again as the Sheridan Bruins will join the league to make it a nine-team league next year. So Sheridan will join, and there is talk potentially of further expansion in 2023, as there is consideration for Mohawk College to join the OCAA, and that would really build the league up, which has in recent years only been a six-team league now an eight-team league with two divisions, and we might see ten teams in this league a few years from now. The Humber Hawks are getting their silver medal and will shake hands with the victorious St. Clair Saints. For some of these players, it will be their final collegiate game. The good news for... All of these players, in spite of the cold weather today, it was at least the conditions were sunny and relatively dry. We did have a lot of rain on Thursday that uh, almost did threaten the game between Humber and George Brown. Silver medal to Humber. Again, their seventh medal in eight years. But it ends the Humber streak of two consecutive championships. St. Clair back on top. Lots of medals to hound out here for the Humber Hawks. Now the gold medals will be handed out to the St. Clair Saints. And we will also see the championship banner presented to the Saints in a moment's time. Gold medals for St. Clair. St. Clair winning yesterday 5-4 over the Durham Lords. Last night 7-5 over the Humber Hawks. And now here this afternoon 7-1 over Humber to clinch the gold medal. Of course, you can always check out all of the game data, statistics, 
box scores and uh, all of the award winners will be listed on the OCAA website, which is always up to date with great data. We'll leave things up here just for a moment so you can see the Saints get the banner. I don't know if they'll show it towards the camera. Hopefully they will. Gold medal still being handed out here to all members of the St. Clair program, players and coaching staff. And they will take the championship with them back home to Windsor. And they will be the defending champions next year in 2022. Medals now being presented to the coaches of the St. Clair Saints. All the players have their medals, and in a moment they will get the championship trophy. And we will try and steer them to show the trophy towards the camera so that everybody can see it at home. They will present the banner now to the Saints and the trophy. You can see it. Uh, at home plate right now and we will see if we can well they're they're now facing the other way but hopefully they will show it for the camera that is uh, mounted behind home plate here at Kinsman Stadium in Oshawa and you will hopefully be able to see it now as they turn around on the other side of the camera. And there it is. There's the OCAA championship banner. The St. Saint Clair Saints showing it off to the fans and to everybody on the live stream. So again, congratulations to the St. Saint Clair Saints 2021 OCAA Men's Baseball Championship Champions. Humber Hawks take the silver and the Seneca Sting are the bronze medalists. So I think we're going to close things off here in just a moment. I, I want to thank uh, everybody who uh, made all of this possible. Sports Canada TV, uh, it was, it was a great, uh, great to be able to bring this game to you and, and have um, good crystal clear pictures. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed all of the action from... Kinsman Stadium in Oshawa. I'd like to thank Jacob Ebbs, my broadcast partner, uh, for a job well done. It was great to call the games with him. My name is Brian Oliver.